quick video here. I'm going to talk you through the Fiskars splitting mall. I've always had Fiskars axes. Like the, I've had the hatchet, I've had the um, X25, and I've bought a couple of X27s for people who have needed to split firewood. Um, I've always had really good experiences with the Fiskars axes. The steel is sort of softer and more malleable than perhaps the um, the Swedish style um, bushcraft axes. So you're going to be sort of maybe knocking the odd uh, dent out of them every now and then with a file, maybe. Um, but really, uh, they certainly do the job for what is effectively, for a splitting axe at least, or a splitting maul especially, just a wedge of metal and a long stick to get your, your big wood rounds uh, halved, quartered, and then eighth from there if you wish. So $100 from Bunnings for this guy. It's made in Finland and um, it is about the ideal splitting companion in my opinion. Why would you choose a axe over a splitting mall? Well an axe is going to be a little bit more, more mobile and easy to use and an axe like a splitting axe is going to have a properly sharp edge especially the Fiskars ones so you would be able to do a little bit of sort of cross genre chopping with it if you really wanted to. This guy here this is like a, it's a working sharp edge, but you can run your finger up and down that without ever being risking of you know, cutting yourself. You abrade yourself at the worst. So it's definitely more about the shape. And you can see they've done the shape really, really well. They've got two sort of nice hollower cheeks here. If you look at that black wedge, you look at the hollow cheeks there and then around again into the convex edge. So really well done. And as you probably see from the, the slow-mo chopping pornography I'm showing you on the screen, this does smash stuff in half really, really easily. A couple of safety tips you want to do when you're using a maul or anything that's a large metal sharp wedge on a stick is basically making sure that if you were to overstrike, just do the math in your head, do the geometry, practice a swing out before, that it's not going to go into your foot. You stand with your legs apart and you stand far enough back, but not so far enough back that it's going to curve back towards you and, uh, and hit you in the shin. So just about getting your stance right. And then once you've got your stance right, you'll get the hang of it and you won't need to keep practicing your stance before each swing. But definitely do that for the first little bit because um, yeah, there's a, occasionally someone gets a, a maul or an ax through their foot, even still. And it's generally when you start getting a bit tired as well. So just slow down a bit and enjoy your time with this very, very nice uh, heavy duty splitting tool. So the main draw for this for me was it also has a sledgehammer head on it. I use a sledge for heaps of stuff around the block. All of Ada's fencing is star drop it in. I'm constantly readjusting things. I'm knocking out old rotten fence posts and usually do that with a few strikes to the top and then to the base of it with a sledge. Obviously being that the other half of it is a mole, you need to be careful of where you're going on the backswing, but really you could always put your um, blade guard back on there if you're too worried. But Generally, if you get a handle of what the kind of tool you're using and don't use it like this <laughs> and cop them all to the face, uh, you're probably going to do fine. And it is a really good eight pound sledge. So 3.6 kilos, eight pounds, does the sledging really good. And from what I can tell, this is sort of correctly tempered for a sledgehammer face. So I've been smashing up rocks and bricks and even bits of um, metal and I've hit, been hitting metal axe wedge with this guy. Now, I didn't say I was competent at using a splitting wedge. <laughs> I'm just trying to demonstrate that it doesn't completely fuck the back up when you use it. It's just your, your standard level of scuffing. I think that's the point I'm trying to make. All right? Go and watch um, Wrangler Man if you want to see how to use a splitting wedge. And the surface is still, while it's all scratched up, there's no huge kind of deformations in it. And most importantly, there's been no chips come off of it. So obviously it's tempered to a nice sort of soft ductile um, heat treatment there. Whether the blade is differentially treated or not, I don't think it particularly matters because all you're really needing to do is maintain this, this actual shape rather than you know a completely fine edge. So yeah. Uh, great thing about fist guys, and this is something that's kind of going to be what makes or breaks them for people is these handles are fixed on the tool for life. Uh, it's kind of molded on, probably melted around, you know, through the head, whatever. But the good thing about them is they are really good at shock reduction. And I'm going to say something, you know, controversial here. I don't want to get political, but um, I find these are actually more comfortable than wooden handles in terms of shock reduction on big, heavy impact tools. So I know, I know it's not a popular, you know, thing, but this one especially, a lot of the ISO core handles are hollow up through the handle. This one is solid all the way through. 
and uh, it really does minimize the shock when you hit through to like a big sort of heavy chopping block or something like that. And um, I've actually had pretty decent times using this for half an hour to an hour periods without getting too fatigued. And we all know fatigue is when you start to make mistakes with tools. And um, I haven't really even had any close calls with this guy yet. So there is an overstrike protector on the, uh, on the head here or just below the head here, which I must admit I've tested out a couple of times uh, involuntarily. I'm not perfect, sometimes I overstrike, but um, overstriking is better than understriking because understriking is what brings the tool back towards your leg. Anyway. Uh, and yeah, it seems to be made of a pretty robust plastic that's not definitely not crumbling away or anything like that. It seems to be withstanding my ineptitude admirably. So there you go. Look, overall, it's a giant splitting mold. It's got a comfortable handle. There's not a huge amount to say about it. Uh, the rubberized section down here is nice for keeping your kind of your secure hand and then the plastic here is slick enough for you to slide your hand up and down when you are doing like a, you know, a two-handed impact to drive down into your wood so it does all the things right if i could redo this entire axe myself i would probably make it so the rubber started just a, even just down there a little bit lower so you get that little tiny bit more hand slide before it goes and kind of hits the brake on the rubber but honestly it goes past just fine it's just something i would change if i could change something and the other thing i would change is oh fuck off came covered in these stickers, which eventually I was always going to take off. And when I did take it off, it's just got one of those stickers that just fucking, ah, oh, you know? Ah. Oh. But anyway, minor, minor stuff. It's really good value. It's cheaper than all the splitting axes. So I assume, I don't know, if you're into maybe something a bit more packable, you might want to get a splitting axe. The Fiskars X27 is an enormous splitting axe, and it's only about an inch shorter, inch or two shorter than this guy here, and it doesn't have the uh, the hammerhead on the back, but it then it does have a bit more of a proper sharp axe bit. So that might be something that if you do want to, to limb or to you know chop down the odd sapling or something, and just have the one axe, then maybe that's something, but I'm all for having a couple of different axes for a couple of different jobs anyway. And of course, a maul for mauling. Anyway, my friends, hope you've enjoyed seeing my splitting mall. Um, it's great. I recommend it. And I'll see you all in the next video. And let's play around with it some more and, and finish up. Goodbye.